Listen, why am I here at BronxNet? I'm here, I'm happy to be at BronxNet. I used to be on BronxNet before. Um, a couple of years ago, I made some appearances on BronxNet, but I am here now. I also have a show on YouTube called Middle Child ENT, The Artist Corner, where I interview artists from all over the country, all over the world, and they sit down with me and they tell their story, what moves them, what motivates them, what keeps them doing a musical career. So it's very, very interesting, yet mostly unsigned artists, great platform for them so if you are an artist and you want to tell your story hit me up at middle child ent i'm on facebook i'm on instagram and you can sit down with me and tell your story well my background is music i've been doing some form of music for years i'm an educator um i'm a community person i plays and dances and i did artist development i helped start a label in brooklyn called go to ghetto gold records and i with my partner who passed away god bless him rest in peace saladin um and I just, music has been my thing. So now I'm on this platform, I'm on BronxNet, and now I'm doing something a little different. I have collaborated with Mr. Herc Bradley, and um, he is the founder of uh, Lambert House Documentary. So I collaborated with him, and we will be doing interviews with past and present residents, as he would like to say, alumni. So they are currently tearing Lambert Houses down and building high rises. And some people feel displaced, some people are not happy about it. So we are sitting down with, with residents, past and present, and um, getting an understanding on how they feel about the process and was it fair and also the hidden stories about growing up in Lambert I'm excited to hear that I grew up in Lambert and I had a wonderful childhood I, I it was great we, we were safe we had fun so if you are a past or present resident and you would like to tell your story virtually with me um, just email me and we can sit down and talk about it but I look forward to you guys watching I look forward to bringing you great content so please Please follow me on all platforms and I'll see you soon. Hello, hello everybody. Good evening. This is BB and this is Lambert House Documentary Spotlight. You know, I'm in the way of the spotlight sometimes. Um, these cameras are driving crazy. So I'm excited today to have a conversation with Miss Sharon Nikki. I think Sharon was from she wasn't from 1026, but I'm going to let her tell her story herself. But anyway, everybody, welcome Miss Sharon Nikki. Hello, everyone. Hi, Brenda. Thank you for interviewing me. This is so great that we get to talk about all of the great things about our childhood and, you know, some of the things that weren't great, but they did help form me to become the great woman that I am right now. Right, and I thank you for coming on because this is I I'm I am excited about it because a lot of people we grew up together but you not you don't always know someone's story just because you grew up with them um wherever her is going with this because it might turn out to some to be something really great and big you know I think some I don't know I don't want to say looking at it you know looking to see how it comes out so I'm glad you are a part of it Sharon so what has been going on with you Miss I am a lot has going on with me I you know I grew up in 2075 which is right next to 1026 mm -hmm. so I grew up in the yellow building and um, you know I, I I left Lambert I don't even remember when I left I was definitely in my 20s when I left and I first moved to Harlem and because that was always the dream to live in Harlem <laughs> so I lived in a couple of brown stones in Harlem and um, then I, um, after Harlem, I actually ended up living in Queen in Cambria Heights with my cousin because I had ended a long-term relationship. And when that ended, I also admitted that I had fibroids and I had really big fibroids mm -hmm. to the point where I did look up like I was pregnant. And um, it, was, it was a pretty life-changing experience. I almost died, mm -hmm. um, but luckily, I did not die, uh, and I didn't know that I almost died until the nurse that was kind of in charge of me told me that I almost died because the surgery was only supposed to be two hours and it turned into an eight-hour surgery. So yeah, so it was pretty. It was pretty significant when they did the sonogram of my fibroids. There were two large centimeter fibroids in my belly, 
Um, and that was already pretty big. And the doctors were like, you know, we're going in. And by the time when they got in, there was like 14 more behind the two big ones. So were you in time, pain? Were you in pain? Yeah, I was, pain? I, was in, I was in constant pain. Um, you know, sex was painful when I was younger. It was very painful. Um, and I, I didn't know the medical reason why. And I used drugs. I used a lot of drugs to cover up the pain. And uh, because I was a young woman, I thought this was just part of, you know, what I do. You know, sniffing, drinking, smoking, getting high. Um, and then I discovered that I actually needed to do it because the pain was too great. Um, so, but once the relationship ended and I really was honest with myself and I addressed those issues, you know, I unfortunately had to get a five or um, get a, an op, a hysterectomy to remove them. And what I initially thought was just going to just, you know, be something to medically correct something that was wrong turned out to be a life changing because not only did I remove the fibroids, but I also removed the chance of me ever becoming a mother. Because now I like after the hysterectomy, I no longer had the capacity to have children. And at that time, you know, like I, I always felt like I didn't want to get pregnant without, you know, being married. So I always was kind of protective of my fertility, but once the option of it was totally removed, it really was like, wow, like I'll never give my mother a grandchild. I'll never be a mother. When I went back to work after that operation, one of the girls on my job was pregnant and we gave her a baby shower and I burst out into tears. I couldn't even, I couldn't even attend because I didn't have the option to be a mom anymore. So it was pretty life changing. I mean, I definitely got better a lot quicker than I thought I, I than I thought I would because um, the relationship that I was in at the time was not good for me. You know, it was with somebody much older. Um, there was definitely a lot of heavy drug use. And, you know, even as young as I was, I knew that that was not really where I should be, but I didn't know how to get out. And once I did actually get out, I got out. You know, life has been still challenges, but much more amazing, including the men that I have dated after that relationship. Even though they have not resulted in a marriage proposal, right. they still have been, you know, every guy I have dated, I will say ever since after that relationship ended has been incrementally better than the last one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, you know, whoever the future husband is, he's gonna be fucking awesome. Because every guy <laughs> that I have met has been mm -hmm. better than the last. That's right, I get it. Sharon, thank you for sharing that story because that's a story that I feel that a lot of women <clears throat> go through and um, they don't they don't necessarily share it. I, I know a, um, a couple of uh, women that do not have children and I used to always tell them that, you know, I had a child when she passed and I made a conscious decision not to have children. And um, because I just didn't, you know, I was scared I would go through the same experience. Maybe there's something wrong with me. But um, it is very important to take care of your body. I know the, I went through the whole fibroid thing too. I just think it's a thing, you know. I went through it later on in life though. And I just had fibroids and it was just, just that's why it actually was it painful because it was so painful for me, you know. It was, it was very, I mean, I, I actually found out I had fibroids probably in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. My gynecologist at the time wanted me to get pregnant because he said, it's just, you know, they're so small, you can get pregnant, have a baby, and we can take them out and you will mm -hmm. never have this issue again. Um, probably reflect, re reflecting back, I do think it still was a good choice not to have children because I knew the man that I was with mm -hmm. and where I was in my life, I was not ready to bring a child into the world. Um, so I chose to ignore him, but I also, in that same sense, 
chose to do everything to make those fibroids get bigger and to become more painful. Okay. You know, not, you know, not eating properly, you know, drugging, drinking, and just not being authentic to myself. You know, not wanting to address some of the issues that I knew what was going on, but you know, a lot of times you don't want to, you don't want to even ad- admit some of the darkness that you have in your life because it's just too, it's just too hard. You're like, no, I'm fine. I'm having, I have, I'm having a moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It'll pass. Absolutely. It really, it, it really never passes if you don't really deal with it. It just gets worse. Mm-hmm. And my fibroid was kind of the reflection of that. Wow, that's deep, Sharon. That that like I said, thank you for sharing that story. Now I know growing up, you were kind of sort of to yourself a little bit, but you lived in Lambert. You experienced stuff. I think that you would, I, as I remember, your brothers were all over the place. Everybody remember your brothers. You were the quiet one, I should say. You were quiet, and everybody knows your brothers. How was your experience? Can you tell me some of the experiences that you had in Lambert when you were younger? Uh, you know, I'm really shocked that you said that I was quiet. I always thought, and I always felt like I was very outgoing, very talkative. Um, I mean, I felt like maybe I was a little bit more quiet around certain people, yeah. um, you know, and I was- But your say, brothers you know, were out there. Your brothers were- Right. Like I mean, my brothers were, were out, they were, you know, that, but I will say candidly, you know, like you and some of your friends, I was like, wow, they're just like these amazing pretty girls and I'm over here like- you know, not really part of the the group because as a young, you know, person, you always want to be part of a group. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't part and I wasn't part of the group. So I guess now when you say that, yeah, I guess around certain people, I definitely was shy um, just because I wasn't part of the social circle. And you Um, know, that's funny, Sharon, not to cut you off, you say that uh because we, you know, growing up, we kind of between me, Gail and Judy, we had to be a group, just us, because the things going on around us wasn't always people didn't always invite us in their group. So we made a thing <laughs> with us, you know, and we wasn't always like invited into other people groups. So, it, yeah, it did seem like that. But we 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 kind of like just band together, the three of us, even though it was a lot of people around us, a lot of people. But it really it was the three. of I get it, though. I get how. Now that I work with kids, work well, I would say with young people, I, I see how those little clicks can form and you don't even realize that they form it, but they definitely form it. You know, I get it. Yeah, I get it. It was our it was our social media when you think about it. It was our social media at the time, you know, our little Facebook groups, if you want to call it, mm-hmm. you know, that we have with our friends. And, you know, I had a couple of little different circle of friends. Um, I don't know if you remember my girlfriend, Glennis, she lived in a red building, probably, yeah, across the street, across the way from you guys. Mm -hmm. And then I did have my girlfriend, Pandora, who lived on the side of the Bronx Zoo I used to be with. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there was a couple of girls I used to hang with in West Farms, Sony and Anna. So I had a couple of little groups that I used to hang out with. Um, And you know, I was definitely probably one of the most talkative ones because I love to talk all of the time and I love to be happy. Even my brother Daryl says, you know, you was always like this high energy, mm-hmm. energetic mm-hmm. girl, you know, like, you know, just happy about everything. So, you know, I did have, you know, I did have some moments in Lambert's where, you know, some of the darkness, you know, I definitely did experience bullying as a very young teenager in Lambert. Mm-hmm. I definitely experienced that. And, um, you know, it was a dark period, but I got through it. And, um, you know, it, it all worked out. But I mean, that's probably, I will say, probably the darkest or bad or, or bad experiences from Lambert. But Mostly what I remember from Lambert is just kind of the social growing up that we all did together. Like we, we all, even though we tried to pretend like we weren't going through things, but 
we were all going through the same thing at the great at the same time. We had great fucking music. I, you know, like I don't know if you just saw the versus battle with Earth, Wind, and Fire and Isley oh, Brothers, man. and I had no Amazing. idea how much. I mean, I always knew I always liked Earth, Wind, and Fire a little bit better. It's because they were closer to my to my generation. Mm -hmm. The Isley Brothers are a little bit older. I mean, Earth, Wind, and Fire. I mean. I always tell a lot of young people now, I'm like, you know what? I do like Drake. I like Migos. I like all, all of the new rap groups, you know, mm -hmm. Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B. But I'm like, guys, you guys missed the best band ever, Earth, Wind & Fire. You talk about inspirational dance music. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know if you remember Tracy that used to live in the blue building in the back. They used to have this little dance routine to get away. I used to watch it. And I used to be practicing that little dance routine from my from my window. <laughs> yeah. And it was just like just those kind of things, you know, remembering, you know, growing up and, you know, wishing, oh, I wish I could be a teenager, even though I was only like 10 or 11. And just seeing all of the things happening, going to school, going to 167. And most of us went to 167. We were all in the same class. We all had the same teachers. We grew up together. You know, that part I loved about growing up in Lambert because it really was a village. You know, it really was a village. I mean, I'm taking out the adults, but just us kids growing up, you know, we had our little, we had our little time, you know, first day of school, everybody had their fresh white shirt with their leaves starched. You could almost stand them jeans up in the corner. It was so much short. <laughs> yeah. You know, so like those kind of memories, it just, it just really brings a smile to my face when I think about it. You know, having crushes on boy, like the first crush and like, oh, you know, like every time some boy would come that I had a crush on. And I will start with the twins because I was definitely the first crush. Definitely the fucking Ronnie and Ralph was like. <laughs> I think a lot of people, a lot of people uh, had that crush. I think my sisters, yeah. my sister had that crush. So I didn't even, and Michelle was like my good friend. So I didn't even look <laughs> at them like that. But yeah, I, it's that is so, so dang on funny. I, I spoke to my first crush yesterday. Ray, Ray was my Oh, Ray yeah. Was oh, he was crush. cute, too. Oh, he was definitely Ray. cute, too. You know who <laughs> else had a crush on? Lee Van. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Chocolate Lee. Woo. <laughs> yeah, Lee Van. Look, uh, you know, I was like, man, I used to cut. I used to love coming to class because I remember when he got his little beard, like his little hair and his, woo. I was yeah, like, Lee man. Yeah, was really fine. <laughs> yes. That's so funny, Sharon. But I guess you're right. We all were going through the same thing. We all had our little crushes because I'm telling you, I, I the twins were definitely cute. They were so, so fine. But my sister and her crew, they was all a little goo goo over them. So I never, and Michelle was like, Michelle was my friend. So I seen them different. But yeah, girl, them little crushes. Then you used to like that. I used to like to walk through the path and hope I see Ray or whoever I was crushing on. Well, Oh, Lord. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, Ray was definitely cute. I mean, I remember, yeah, I was like, woo. Yeah, he was definitely, mm hmm He was definitely a crush. He was definitely a crush, too. It was it was a lot. Of, I mean, it was a lot of guys. And, you know, I don't know. I never shared this with anybody. I dated Tracy from 1026. And we used to kiss on the stairs. Oh, my God. Yes, we did. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like this. I, I just love this platform because everybody I talk to is just so funny and it's so much good stuff, you know, because when you when you're growing up, you don't realize those are good times. Like you just right. grow, you're just growing up. You don't re realize like, oh, God, these are going to be the good times, you know, and to reflect back on it is it's like so amazing. It's like it's great. Um, it's great. It's great. You know, a lot of times, especially you know, I mean, we haven't had Lambert reunion, um, you know, last year we couldn't have it, obviously. But every time I came back, it was like, you know, memories that I had not even thought about, like came flooding back. It was like, oh, wow. Yeah. I remember I used to come like when I used to walk past 1026, 
somebody would be here, like Tammy would be in there singing Reasons and, you know, all sorts of fun things was happening. I was like, wow, I haven't thought about that in a long time. Or I would walk in a hallway and some, some, you know, some one of my crushes would just be standing there, you know, like thinking that they're just standing there. And I'm like, oh, like, woo, <laughs> he's there. <laughs> Yeah. So it was a lot, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And the thing that I did enjoy about our buildings, our our projects was they were all connected. Mm -hmm. So you can go and see your friends without even actually having to go outside. Like I used to mm -hmm. I used to go to Glenna's house almost every single day. No, not almost. I did go every single day without even going outside. Like I would be at our house so much that like whenever my mother would say, go find your sister, the first place they would go would be to Glennis house. Cause that's usually where I was, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, cause she had cable and we didn't have it. And I was like, Oh, okay. So we, I'm just going to be there. Cause there's not only going to be cable, but there's going to be good food. Mm -hmm. And then my best girlfriend is there and her mother worked at night. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, here's, there's a party here. Right. And we felt safe running through those buildings. Like now I couldn't even imagine any buildings like running through, but we, we didn't have no fear. We, 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 we was just, life was good. Like, well, that's the beauty of being young. You're so optimistic about everything. You don't even care. You're like, I'm just doing it. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And you know, you don't even, you, you know, that is the one thing that I try to hold on. Even as a 56 year old woman, it's like, don't lose optimism don't lose don't lose your faith don't lose your desire to keep trying because I don't want to be old I mean I am getting older but I still want to have the optimism that I had as a young person to keep trying and you could tell that's the way that's why you look the way you look and that's the way you talk the way you talk because you can tell and <laughs> It is very important, you know, and I always say it to even surround yourself with people that like minded people that think like that, because it keeps you at the same age. And I feel like, you know, every day I'm taking better care of my skin. I'm taking better care of my hair. I'm taking like you have to put so much more and it's OK, because this is where you're at in your life. But I feel optimistic about the world, about life, like, oh, my God, I'm 56, but I I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And, you know, it's, it's, it changes. You focus more on the, what you eat and how you exercise and, and to be around people that also feel the same way. It keeps you growing because it, it's, it's, it's very important, Sharon. I could tell it is. Like I watch you on Instagram. I'm like, Oh, she's doing that. She's doing that. So <laughs> I want to find out two things before the time right now. What do you think about the gentrification going on in Lambert? Do you okay. think, things, Go ahead. what do you think about that? I honestly think it's good. I have a different perspective about gentrification. A lot of people uh, have a bad connotation. Mm -hmm. I, I feel even before I became a real estate agent, anytime people get to a, other people beside the people in my community, and I'm not talking about Black people, just generally in the community where I live, mm -hmm. when everybody else starts to find out how awesome it is to fucking live here, Mm -hmm. I'm happy okay. because as an adult, I also realized that means that there's people are going to start putting more money into this community. Now Absolutely. people are going to put more money into the community. And even though we grew up without half of the stuff that they're putting into Lambert now, it was a great place to live one because, you know, first of all, we're near one of the seven wonders of the world, the Bronx zoo. It was right fucking there. We had the opportunity to go all at a time, the train station. Mm -hmm. We had Lexington Avenue, 7th Avenue trains right there. You can get to anywhere in Manhattan from where we live, mm -hmm. anywhere. Because I took that train many a days to go to Bentley's. So I know. <laughs> <laughs> and the few opportunities that I had to, you know, be in a car and drive somewhere with someone, it was very easy to get to where we lived. Highway was right there. And yeah. so, yeah, that's true. I, I agree. And so right now, what are you doing? What's going on in your life? What are you doing? Well, right now I'm doing a lot. I am um, actually, I have my real estate license in New York and I've had it for about 10 years. 
I'm adding a New Jersey license because for the last 14 years, I've been living in Newark, New Jersey. Okay. So I'm adding the New Jersey real estate license. I also have added commercial model and acting, and I now have um, an agent and I have a talent manager. Nice. So I am reimagining my dreams of being a model. I mean, when I was younger, I wanted to be Amon and Beverly Johnson and Grace Jones and walk the runway and do shows in Paris and look fabulous. But, mm -hmm. you know, that was a childhood dream. The reality is, is that being a model is not just on a runway. You know, it's the person on the commercial that's promoting Dove or it's, you know, the person on a commercial, you know, selling progressive insurance. That is also modeling and acting. Right. So that's where I am right now. So, oh God, that's, that's you know. Amazing. How did the pandemic affect uh, your real estate and, and stuff like that? How did it, or did it affect it? Oh, it was devastating. I didn't make absolutely one cent in 2020 from real estate mm -hmm. at all. Wow. It was pretty devastating. I was fortunate. And sometimes I, when I say that word, I'm like, is it really? But I was fortunate to still have my nine to five job. Okay. So I wasn't, a, it wasn't a total loss of income, but it was, it was pretty devastating financially to not have that additional income. Mm -hmm. But it was also an opportunity to get real about what am I really doing with this real estate license? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like what fears do I really have about really going at this full time? And that's really what the pandemic kind of said to me. I um, wish you all the luck when you're modeling. I'm going to follow you. You look amazing. Whoever does your makeup, your hair, your, and you always look, it, it just always looks so nice. Yeah. Well, my cousin does my hair. She's, she's the only person. And I've, I've worked with different makeup artists and they're always great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they make me look good. It, it's not easy. Good. You know, doing it. I used to think modeling was easy, but it's very, it, it can be challenging, you know, because you could be tired or you can not be having a good day, but, you know, you got to sell a product because modeling is selling too. It's, it's not just looking cute. You have to make, you know, you have to sell something, mm -hmm. <laughs> whether it's a, a product or idea or experience, but I know you have to go. And Brenda, thank you for doing this. Okay. You know, I feel like we got a little closer in these little, <laughs> in this little 30 minutes. That's we did yeah. so crazy, but um, hopefully they'll have a Lambert House day or something. And I just think this documentary is going to bring a lot of people out because I know I'll be there and I don't always go to the, um, I just, I, you know, taking care of my mom. I just didn't always go because it would be really, she always wanted to go, but it would be hard, you know? So yes, yeah. Sharon, we will get together. You are, you are yes. in, in Jersey, you said, right? Yeah, I'm in Newark. Yeah. I, I definitely don't feel like I'm ready to come this year because I'm still, I mean, I'm vaccinated, fully vaccinated. I'm just, I don't, I'm not ready for crowds just yet. Girl, but I'm I feel like podcast. I did a whole podcast about that the other night. I was like, does anybody feel like me? <laughs> I, I, girl, I hear you 100%. 2020 is going to be on though. I can tell you that. <laughs> 2022. I want to be in Dubai. Goodbye. I want to be in Dubai. But anyway, yes. thank you, Sharon, so much. Appreciate it. And, um, you know, let's see where this goes, this document. All right. All right, Brenda Baker. Thank okay. you so much. All right. You too. Bye.